Hey guys, welcome back to Our Little Mountain Life. My name is Don and it's been a while. We've got a lot to catch you up on, a car crash, fixing some big mistakes we made, saying goodbye to an old friend, lots to talk about. So uh, let's go feed the animals and get you guys caught up. So let's start off with talking about our friend that we said goodbye to. If you've been following us for a while, you know we used to live inside of a camper before we built our house. We're saying goodbye to the camper today. Goodbye to an old friend. Good riddance. <laughs> <laughs> Some people are more excited about this than others. Obviously, you know, we've been in our house for a while now and we don't really need the camper anymore. Um, we have a friend of ours. He's actually the guy that did the tile in our bathroom, in our master bathroom. Uh, he's in need of a camper right now, so we thought we'd hand it over to him. We got our, our time out of it and it's just kind of been a storage unit for the last couple of years. Dude, it was harder living in that thing than I thought it was going to be. I, I think uh, if you had had much camper experience before we moved into it, you probably wouldn't have agreed to do it. It just, it was a rough 18 months in there. And I just opened it, the door and stuck my head in again. I was like, nope, nope, goodbye, good riddance. Yeah. Did not miss this dark little hovel. <laughs> Frozen water lines, dumping the poop. Mice. Jeez, the, the poop lines and the, the, the water lines freezing all the time. And then when the wind on the mountain would pick up and the whole thing would like, whoosh, like hitch and we were like, yeah, and obviously with are it being, we going to fly down the mountain? Yeah, with it being a camper, it wasn't <laughs> super solid. And when those poop lines would clog or freeze. It was the worst. Oh, so bad. We learned a lot about camper life. Yeah. I feel I feel like I could do it and be better at it again, but I think I, don't I learned think you want enough to, do <laughs> to know that I don't want to do camper life again. Yeah, so this is the day uh, he's gonna come pick it up, and we'll say goodbye, and we'll have, you know, like a 20 by 40 section of our property back that's been kind of taken up by this old camper, and uh, yeah, it's the end of an era. Goodbye, good riddance. It's been it was good for us. We didn't have to pay rent that whole time. It's true. It's true. We, we saved a to... ton of money, which we really needed to put towards the house. Yeah. So, yeah. So, goodbye, Mr. Camper. And I mentioned earlier we got into a car crash. Well, I got into a car crash driving home from dropping the girls off at school. Kind of had one of those slow motion car crashes where both drivers can see each other through the windows and you know it's about to happen and you're not going super fast and the, in the inevitable collision happens. Kind of just is what it is. Uh, kind of sad to not have my Subaru for this time. They're gonna have to do a lot of front end work on it. Kind of hurt my back for a few days, but it's no big deal. But obviously anytime you have a car crash, it definitely messes with your flow and uh, makes life a little interesting for a while. Ah, oh, good times. Ah, now let's tell you about one of the biggest mistakes that we made for our home build and uh, what we had to do to fix it. So uh, Natalie, remember when we painted these windows and doors? It's been years. This, I, I think this is our biggest regret on this home build. Like of all the things we did, design choices, methodology, I think that these doors and windows, painting them and not buying oh, black to start yes. with. I agree, yes. When we purchased the windows for this house, it was so much more expensive to buy black ones. So we bought white. Twice as expensive. Yeah, so we bought white and we painted it. But I mean, I would have really preferred that we would have bought black, Yeah. but I'm not sure that we could have afforded to buy all of these windows and I would rather have them painted than have less windows. It just, it is what it is. We didn't have the money back then to yeah. splurge on like fancy custom aluminum windows or whatever. And we really wanted custom like triangle shaped windows, you know, but we couldn't afford them. So we just looked at standard sizes and just stacked them like Legos. Yeah. yeah, it it looks okay now, but I'm I'm upset that the color isn't as dark. I'm gonna repaint it. I think I'm they gonna look repaint fine. it. I think they look fine. I don't like it. And as we like really truly get to finishing this house, I can't stand looking at these doors and windows anymore. So I'm gonna take the gray paint that we painted on before and we paint over it and paint it black. I see a gray door, and 
and I want it. And I want to paint it black. I want to paint it black. Yeah. So uh, we're going to do the same thing on the inside. The inside of the house, we painted the windows the same gray color. We, I, I'm going to go back to white. Inside the house, we're going back to white. Outside the house, we're going to black. And it's unfortunate. I want like a, our nice pictures of the outside of this house as we finish it to be all black and just okay. it'll be better. Sleek. It'll be better. Okay. So uh, let's repaint the doors and windows. We already the painted. Shadow of a union train in the pouring rain in the city that always sleeps. You try to take me on a holiday. I want to crawl away because this place gives me the creeps. Why'd you want to bring me here? Places like the last frontier, and they don't even sell no souvenirs. There's no one here to buy them. Whoa. Painting something the wrong color isn't the biggest mistake in the world, but considering all the time, effort, and energy that went into painting those things in the first place, having to paint those things a second time just felt wrong. But we're happy with it now. Then a while back, we actually closed down the garden. You know, things have been getting cold up here with fall setting in and uh, Natalie took care of the garden the entire summer. She did great with it. We harvested a lot of tomatoes, uh, some peppers actually, and we had some really cool winter melons that we grew for the very first time. It was a great close to the season. We grew quite a lot of food this year without too much effort. Like I said, Natalie nailed it, taking care of things with that. We had the peach and the pear tree produced for us this year. So all good things. We're still growing a little bit of food. Maybe not as much as I would like, but we're growing a lot of food. So with everything going on, I had the great idea to actually fly to another state for a homesteading event. Jack from the Mindful Homestead and Brian from the Homestead Journey put together a New England homesteading event. And I said, yeah, I'll come up and help, even though my house still isn't finished. So I flew up there to New Hampshire, had a good time with them, helped them put on that event and do some filming for them. And then a couple weeks after that was the Homesteaders of America event that we have in Front Royal every year. I didn't do the filming for that this year, uh, but we did have a really big gathering over at our place. Lots of online YouTube friends came over for a little barbecue. It was a good time. I guess you're all cut up now on all the highlights and why we've been so busy and just YouTube hasn't been a priority, but we are really excited to share uh, a lot of great progress inside the house with you guys that we've been making lately. I have been recording, just not editing those videos. I'm on track right now to get everything completely trimmed and finished for the holidays and have an awesome like epic 14 foot tall Christmas tree in the great room. It'll be awesome. So uh, looking forward to sharing all the progress with that in the next few weeks and we'll see you guys on those next videos.